attention. Our next speaker is Judy Scarbuck. She'll be discussing occupational therapy updates in stroke rehab. Judy is a senior occupational therapist who has worked at Houston Methodist for over 33 years. She has experience in evaluating and treating acute stroke patients. She received her bachelor's degree in occupational therapy from Texas Women's University in 1988 and received her master's in rehabilitative services from Texas Tech University in 2004. She has presented lectures on occupational therapy and stroke both at the university and occupational therapy state conference levels. And on a personal note, I work with Judy very closely with a lot of our patients and we really value her and her expertise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bolby, Dr. Gard. Appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak with everyone in regard to the role of occupational therapy with the stroke patient. You, I don't have any um, disclosures. You will see some pieces of equipment that I show on here, and mainly I show them just to let you know what is available and what your patients are going out and purchasing online, and what your responsibility would be to help educate them on how to use those items. So first, um, these are just some objectives to look at. They just have an understanding of the role of occupational therapy and stroke recovery and that you understand some of the current research. Um, it's really kind of interesting that for occupational therapy, it still goes back to our big goal, which is self-care and upper extremity function and activities of daily living. This is very much a traditional picture of what you see in occupational therapy in the therapeutic gym area in an inpatient rehab. We have both actually occupational therapy and physical therapy working with this patient. So the goal of the occupational therapist is to help in, with um, helping folks across their lifespan and looking at using therapeutic use of self as well to help with activities of daily living. Occupational therapy looks at the holistic approach. We look at promoting quality of life. We also are wanting to make sure that we can help those folks improve their social skills, memory, and cognition which I hope next year if we get an opportunity to present that we would deal more on some cognition and related to stroke because um, I think that's very much, we talked earlier um, about the modified, the ranking score of four um, as an occupational therapist and my physical therapy folks, I think when they get that modified ranking four, they have cognitive impairment cognitively. So to make some of those decisions about their next level of care, in regard to what procedures should be, do, be done to them, I think they definitely need to involve family because I believe cognitively they struggle with the stress of just being in part of being here with a stroke. The other is that we utilize um, evidence and practice which is deeply rooted in the role of occupational therapy. Accordingly to our National Association, the definition of occupational therapy, I'll read it to you quickly, the therapeutic use of everyday life, occupation with persons, groups, or populations to support occupational performance and participation. Very much so through and facilitating everyday life activities. You can see that young gentleman there working on doing his uh, cooking task with the OT. What we do and with our evidence is that we look through and we evaluate our patients. We use assessments. I'm doing particularly with this gentleman here looking at his grip strength. We create um, and look through the evidence-based assessments that we use um, to help us make a treatment plan and also to be, then be able to do that person-centered care plan and create goals for them both in the acute care setting. We specifically want to look at ADLs and intervention, um, and we will do a combination of this um, per a Cochrane review, that, um, that's what we look at as doing both. In both the acute care and post-acute, this can either be within um, inpatient rehab or skilled nursing or acute. We look at potentially looking at restorative and remedial. Glenn Gillen, a um, huge stroke OT, who helps us with um, looking at approaches to the OT framework, we look at using compensatory as well as adaptive approaches. And you can see here, I have Christy working with one of our um, acute care stroke patients working on activity of just range of motion. 
And this is a restorative approach, that bottom-up approach um, that encompasses outcome to acquire or restore one's skills that are necessary to participate in occupation. Many times the focus is on the defects of this person. The treatment goals concentrate on levels of impairment, very similar to that medical model. One advantage of this is the data collection. The other um, that we also see is some disadvantages, which are frames of reference, and also improved function, which seems ironic that we would say that that's a disadvantage, but that's restorative care. In the compensatory, which is your top-down approach, we look at maximizing a person's existing skills or residual strength. We adapt or compensate um, to assist the patient with their recovery. The focus is on skills necessary to participate in activities of daily living. The treatment plan concentrates on adaptation and intervention to perform functional per, um, per, perform for function performance. The advantages of the top-down approach is it is holistic. And by the way, as I mentioned earlier, that is the root of occupational therapy, is holistic approach. One disadvantage is that not all the assessments are objective, and so that creates a little bit of disparity for the therapist in collecting their data as well. So next, we look in acute and post-acute. We, as OTs and PTs, but in occupational therapy, we will use a combination of both the restorative as well as compensatory strategies to help us with treatment sessions and to be most successful with our patients. We like to use evidence-based, occupation-based, and client-centered, and that's with Winstock as well. So this is where I talked a little bit about some of the pieces of equipment that you would see. And um, for choice, the Fugelmeyer, the Fugelmeyer assessment for upper extremity is the, actually the gold standard for what we use for um, stroke outcome in upper extremity. And so I put these slides up there, um, current treatment of, um, interventions that are out there. This particular is using robotics. Um, they went through traditional rehab. They re did one, ther one hour session, five days a week receiving OT or PT as well, but OT. The research found that both therapeutic interventions, um, both statistically and clinically, do change outcomes. What they found, you, this particular device, you can find these on um, Amazon. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure you <laughs> um, saw these that are out there and what's currently out there that patients have access to because they're gonna bring this to your attention from a physician standpoint as well as um, from a therapeutic standpoint, and they're gonna ask you how these devices work and get more therapy um, requests for orders. <clears throat> this particular study uses a randomized crossover control, a blinded design. It's called the Gorea Sinfora robotic device. Really kind of nice, I think one of the disadvantages particular to this device could be potentially the cognition of your um, patient or their understanding of electronics and how this operates. And if they have visual impairment, left neglect, these devices then would be a very much of a challenge for them where the role of the occupational therapist teaching them to use these devices would be very critical. This device focuses on distal upper extremity using a dynamic support system to support proximal part and limb against gravity. You can see where it can be a little bit of a visual challenge. The device uses a 3D animation on the screen and amplifies cortical stimulation. The study looked at 25 patients with two therapeutic treatment approaches using robotic as well as conventional therapy approach Again, the Fugelmeyer resulted in robotic therapy hand improvements in proximal function at the shoulder and elbow. So distally, that still is a challenge in recovery with this particular device. Participants received and completed 12 sessions, and they did show and produce a significant improvement in upper extremity motor control and ADLs. 
It was determined, as I mentioned just a, a moment ago, that distal, uh, more distal function, like finger function, was difficult to achieve. A Cochrane review by Bernbeck in 2017 found that the improvements vary in duration and the amount of training, the type of treatment, and the various patient characteristics. Again, whether or not the patient has the cognitive ability to be able to understand this virtual look to this particular treatment program. The implications for OT practice, that would involve me and others in occupational therapy, include facilitation of the whole arm, achieve movement and improve functional recovery with improvements in the extensor muscle. Also control of the extremity and looking at synergistic patterns. It was reducing those. So one of the others, um, Dr. Hottis talked about earlier, you've seen this with her picture as well, but therapists are very much actively involved in the vagus nerve research. She mentioned um, um, that the OTs are working in this and physical therapists as well and how this is designed, but I wanted to make sure that you understood conventionally how folks are also receiving therapy here. It was, as she mentioned, it was a six-week clinical program followed by home exercise. And that's where we were talking earlier, is really making sure that patients do home exercise. We, in part of our evaluation, will ask people all the time, what's your exercise regimen like? What's, what do you do? Do you walk? Do you do arm exercise? Do you do Pilates? Do you do upper extremity strength exercise? If you have a population of folks who don't necessarily exercise, Putting devices out there for them to have to do carryover outside of your clinic can be somewhat of your challenge. So the outcomes with the vagus nerve, they looked at the patients day one, day 30, and day 90. And again, the ultimate goal here was for improving upper extremity function. Kimberly and their colleagues um, discovered that through this high repetition restorative, that bottom-up approach, um, to rewire the brain both cortically and recruiting both sides of the brain was seen through this vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve stimulation paired, this is their quote, with movement has been shown to drive task uh, specific plasticity in the motor cortex as well as seen through their, her other example which was that rodent model research study as well. The clinical trial with Kimberly was again using highly repetitive um, and restorative arm function. It was found that the consistency of neuroplasticity treatment and where time is needed for benefit as well. And so um, in summary, I just want to make sure that we understand that all these studies look at neuroplasticity as well as repetition and aim for upper extremity recovery. We have limitation in distal arm function that still needs a lot of research in regard to the hand and the fingers. Um, many times um, the challenge, as I mentioned, is with patients performing their own home program. And so I think you have to make sure you get a very much of a commitment from those patients that they will follow through with those programs even at home. Um, again, I believe that the concern where occupational therapists need to be is all these devices that are available online and even these folks getting YouTube videos and looking through and being able to think that they can follow through and do the exercises does require the professional skills of therapists to help guide them through their exercise program. So with that, thank you. <laughs>